from Turkey to Amman, Jordan, Tel Aviv to Canada. The global call for an immediate end to Israel's military escalation into Gaza brought people from all walks of life onto the streets of nearly 100 cities worldwide. In Dublin, scuffles broke out between police officers and protesters. This is an illegal arrest, I've broken no law! Why was he arrested? Why was he arrested? Why was he arrested? Why was he arrested? The people in Gaza are being kept under siege, under embargo, they're being deliberately starved. Uh, that is an inherently violent uh, situation. So Israel cannot say that any acts of resistance that come from Gaza are forcing them into self-defense. There is a basic situation there of aggression from the Israeli side. So we are here to demand the minister immediately coming out and saying this has to stop, immediately calling in the Israeli ambassador, the yeah, Israeli yeah. embassy, I mean, nothing like that. Ireland is supposed to be taking up its seat on the UN Human Rights Council on the 1st of January and they're boasting uh, non-stop about this. They're very verbose when it comes to how great things they're going to do. What do they do now in the teeth of this appalling violation of Palestinian rights? They keep quiet. They don't say yeah. a damn thing. So that's why we're here. I'm a privileged Israeli Jew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just arriving in Dublin and uh, seeing what's going on here and this is uh, very heartwarming to see uh, the support that yeah. Palestine gets around the world. The West Bank. I have a choice of supporting fascism yeah. or, or opposing it. I have a, a choice of supporting yeah. apartheid or, or being an anti-apartheid yeah. activist, and this is what I am. Yeah. So, so this is what it's about. It's about opposing Israeli occupation and apartheid, opposing its policy that, uh, that is uh, terroristic at the, ver at the very least. Yeah, we see yeah. what is happening in yeah. Gaza at the moment. In London, Tiaran's Hassan Ghani filed this report. Well, British Foreign Minister William Haig has pinned the blame for what's happening entirely on Hamas and has condemned rocket fire and expressed sympathy with Israelis. But he seems to have very little sympathy for Palestinian victims of Israel's bombing campaign. And of course, he has completely failed to condemn Israel's action. Today, there were protests held outside the Israeli embassy in London and, of course, the protesters are quite scathing of Israel's actions in Gaza, but they're also very angry about their own government's position, uh, and we spoke to some of them earlier. There's a very angry feeling here this evening, a very angry and very sad feeling, because we've been seeing the most terrible images of brutality coming out from Gaza. Today we heard William Haig, our Foreign Secretary, say that Hamas is to blame for the current events taking place there. Well, I ask you, who is really the aggressor in this, in this situation? Is it the people of Gaza? Is it the people who are struggling for their rights there? Or is it the Israeli state, which has repeatedly attacked Gaza? Has deprived? We saw just last week huge protests, a huge protest in Israel against austerity. So the Israeli government is cynically attacking Gaza to distract from the real social and economic problems that are facing the Israeli people. So that election can take place in a cloud of war, in a fog of war, which obscures the reality of the situation. The eyes of the world are on Gaza, but the eyes of the world are on the protests as well. And we know that protests can make a difference. Protests are happening around Europe. They're happening from coast to coast in the United States of America. I've had messages today from friends in California, friends in New York, friends in Berlin, friends in Athens. The demonstrations are also taking place across Britain. And I promise you this, if this assault continues, then the demonstrations will get bigger. And even if it's brought to an end quicker, then the impact of this can only hasten the anger, only speed the process inside the Middle East and in Europe to bring justice for the Palestinians. This was what's termed an emergency protest in solidarity with Palestinians and what's going on in Gaza. A much larger protest is expected outside the Israeli embassy in London on Saturday. Killing civilians is a crime! Killing civilians is a crime! In Washington, D.C., protesters snaked around the State Department and marched toward the White House. Hey, Obama, listen up! Hey, Obama, listen up! Our resistance won't give up! Obama's response is shameful. I think that all of us are, are quite aware of the fact that uh, 
Obama kind of made an unholy alliance with uh, Netanyahu and the Israeli officials. The drone strikes on, on uh, civilian populations, it's despicable. Um, and it shows how much uh, lack of care, lack of concern, and lack of value that uh, Israel, as well as America, has for the Palestinian people. إسرائيل مش فوق القانون الدولي وإحنا أنا يعني بأسف الواحد إنه يشوف أمريكا إنه والحكومة الأمريكية بتعطى شك عبيات لحكومة إسرائيل مشان تقتل الأطفال والأبرياء يعني وإذا رجع إلى يعني التايم لاين تاع الأحداث بتشوف إنه إسرائيل هي اللي بلشت في الأجريشن أجنست ضد الفلسطينيين وبتشوف إنه الفلسطينيين يعني أول رد لهم كان ضد أهداف عسكرية ردوا ضربوا أهداف مدنية أولاد بيلعبوا فوتبول بعدين extra judicial execution of chief of uh, military of Hamas it, it, I don't know do you act as a state or a terrorist organization Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi sent his Prime Minister Hashem Kandil and several other Palestinian cabinet National members Unity to Gaza Friday to morning. The of the this is a direct contrast to what happened during Operation Cast Lead when the Egyptian government stood idly by under Hosni Mubarak and allowed the bombardment and also sealed off the Gaza border from Palestinians coming through for medical treatment. You know, we, we are proud to, to restore our identity uh, and to, to, to be proud of being Egyptians. Uh, Egyptians are, no, are not followers, we are leaders in the region. And we were proud of what Morsi is doing at the moment. Since Israel began its attacks on the Gaza Strip, protests have erupted throughout Egypt and the rest of the Arab world in support of the Palestinians. On Friday, thousands marched throughout the capital Cairo. Israel claimed it would suspend its airstrikes in Gaza during the Egyptian delegation's visit. However, when the Egyptian premier arrived, Israel continued to pound the besieged territory, killing two, including a young child. The AP reported on the eve of the high-profile visit to Gaza, nearly 100 airstrikes slammed into the Gaza Strip within the span of 45 minutes. So far, 20 Palestinians have been killed, half of them children, and on the Israeli side, three Israeli civilians were killed and others were injured. 30,000 Israeli reservists are bordering the Gaza Strip and preparing for a ground operation. On Thursday and Friday, rocket fire from Gaza reached the outskirts of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, indicating its reach into Israel is widening. The Israeli Defense Forces sent out this blast text message to residents of Gaza. It warns the next phase is on the way. Stay away from Hamas elements. Death and destruction continued throughout Friday night in Gaza as the international outcry against Israel's latest bombing campaign in Gaza only grew louder. Jahan Hafiz for The Real News, Washington.